Wiring subwoofers can be a tricky business if you've never done it before, or if you haven't done the research to fully grasp the concept. There has always been a lot of confusion specifically surrounding watts, amps, and impedance, which all relate directly to Ohm's law and hence subwoofer wiring. This video will be fairly technical, so pay attention and get your education for the day. Down in the bio of this video is a link to our subwoofer wiring and impedance page, so you can figure out the impedance and wiring situation for your system and match your subs to amps with ease. But for those of you who actually want to learn how to wire your subs and calculate impedance on your own, keep watching. Before we get into it though, let's briefly go over a system and talk about what makes it work. Amplifiers provide the electrical output in a circuit. Subwoofers provide the load measured in resistance and watts measure how much power is released by that amplifier. That leads to Ohm's law, which is V equals I times R. An easy analogy for Ohm's law is in plumbing terms. Voltage is the size of the pipe. I is the water flow measured in amperes. R is the back pressure measured in ohms. Or it's like drinking. Alcohol provides the chemical reaction to get you drunk. Your inability to walk or make coherent sentences measures how inebriated you are and the projection force of your vomit is the release of power. The first step to wiring your subwoofers is to make sure that they match your amplifier. Specifically, their power ratings and impedances. We already have an extensive video on matching subs and amps, so we won't go into detail on it in this video. I'll just assume you've watched it or understand how to do it. Click up top to view that video and enlighten yourself if you don't know what I'm talking about. There are two very important characteristics to every subwoofer that determine how you will wire it and what kind of load you'll get. The load being the final impedance or ohms, which must match your amplifier's impedance capabilities. The first is how many voice coils they have whether they're single or dual voice coil. Voice coils are at the heart of every speaker and subwoofer, comprised of coils of wire wrapped around the cylinder called the former, which accepts the amplifier's current. This means they are the devices that put up the electrical resistance. Current from the amplifier causes the coil to react with the stationary magnet, moving the former up and down. The former is attached to the speaker cone, which produces changes in air pressure when moved, producing sound. Its resistant property is the impedance and is measured in ohms. I know for a fact not all of you followed me, so rewind if you have to, but I gotta keep moving on. A single voice coil has one length of wire wrapped around the former. A dual voice coil has two coils of wire wrapped around the former. A single voice coil subwoofer will have a positive and negative terminal, while a dual voice coil subwoofer will have two positive and two negative terminals, one for each coil. Performance and specs are identical, but the key difference between single and dual voice coil subwoofers is the multiple wiring options dual voice coil subs offer for easier amplifier loading. A lower ohm coil or system impedance equals a greater amplifier load. A higher impedance load will result in less amplifier output. For example, an amplifier will output more power at 2 ohms than at 4 ohms, and an amp at 4 ohms will output more power than one at 8 ohms. The byproduct of the lower resistance is amplifier heat. That's why you must make sure your amp is rated to handle those loads. <laughs> 1 ohm and 2 ohm are easier to match and wire, but some people will argue 4 ohm sounds better. To each their own. I personally have a 2 ohm system. Does that make me better than you? Maybe. Probably. Okay, so that's voice coils and ohms down. Now, if you're still with me, let's get to wiring. There are two different ways to wire your subwoofers. Parallel or series. A parallel circuit is one that has two or more paths for electricity to flow. The loads are parallel to each other. It's like a river that has been divided up into smaller streams, however, all the streams come back together to the same point to form the river once again. A series circuit is one with all loads in a row, meaning there is only one path for the electricity to flow. For example, if the circuit was a string of light bulbs and one blew out, the remaining bulbs would turn off. The flow of electricity has been disrupted. Also, the total resistance of a series circuit is equal to the sum of individual resistances. More on that later. Let's go over dual voice coil subwoofer wiring first, starting with parallel. Again, with a dual voice coil subwoofer, there are two sets of terminals on the sub. For demonstration's sake, let's call them A and B. To wire the subwoofer in parallel, you connect the negative of the amp to the negative of terminal A then connect to the negative side of terminal B. You do the same thing with the positive sides. So you see the river, then two streams, one negative, one positive, going in their own direction, and then coming back to form the river again. The exact technique applies to multiple dual voice coil subwoofer systems. Connect positives to positives and negatives to negatives on all the subs to the amp. Series wiring, on the other hand, is slightly different. For a dual voice coil subwoofer wired in series, you connect the positive of the amp to the positive of terminal A, and the negative of the amp to the negative of terminal B, 
Remaining on the subwoofer is an empty negative on terminal A and an empty positive on terminal B. Connect those together. That's series wiring. It looks like a constant flow of current just like a river. And again, the same wiring applies for multiple subs. The two methods can even be combined for series parallel wiring. Single voice coil subwoofers are a lot easier to wire, mainly because they have only one set of terminals. For parallel, all you do is connect the positive of the sub or subs to the positive of the amp. Same thing with the negatives. Doesn't matter if it's just one subwoofer or five, it's very simple. With series, you create the constant river again. You connect the positive of the amp to the positive of subwoofer A. Then connect the negative of subwoofer A to the positive of subwoofer B. Then the negative of subwoofer B to the negative of the amp. For three or four single voice coils in series, just keep connecting negative to positive. So negative of A to positive of B, negative of B to positive of C, etc. Until the negative of the last sub connects to the negative of the amp. Now you know how to wire subs, but how do you determine the impedance? Pay close attention. I'm sure most of you haven't seen an equation since school, but I'm about to throw some at you. There are a few formulas to help determine impedance. Parallel formula. 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Series formula, RT equals R1 plus R2. The easiest system to wire is one that deals with two single voice coil subwoofers. To wire in series, I stated earlier that the circuit or impedance equals the sum of individual voice coil resistances. Our system will consist of two single voice coil 1 ohm woofers. To wire this in series, we will do this math. RT equals 1 plus 1, or 2 ohms. To wire this in parallel, we use the following formula. If impedance is R, then 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. 1 over RT equals 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 1 ohm, or 1 over RT equals 2 ohms. So, to clear out our fraction, we multiply both sides by RT. 1 equals 2 RT. To clear this, we divide both sides by 2. 1 half equals RT, or half an ohm load. In the next example, we will use two single voice coil 4 ohm subwoofers. For series wiring, it's fairly simple. 4 plus 4 equals 8 ohms. Get it? 4 Crunchwrap Supremes plus 4 Crunchwrap Supremes equals 8 Crunchwrap Supremes. For parallel wiring, it's a little more complicated. 1 over RT equals 1 over 4 ohms plus 1 over 4 ohms. Or 1 over RT equals 2 over 4 ohms. Multiply both sides by RT. 1 equals 2 over 4 ohms RT. To clear this, we divide both sides by 2 over 4 ohms. 1 over 2 over 4 ohms equals RT. 1 divided by half an ohm equals 2 ohms. Alright, let's go over this again, boys and girls. The formula is 1 over resistance total equals 1 over resistance per coil, plus however many coils you have. Let's say we have three single voice coil subwoofers. The formula would be one over RT equals one over R plus one over R plus one over R because there's only three coils involved. If we have three dual voice coil subwoofers, it'll be one over RT equals one over R plus 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 one over R because there's six voice coils now. Do you understand? Pop quiz right now, get your pens out. If you're still having trouble, click up top to head over to our page on subwoofer wiring and impedance. Again, the link's also in the bio. Just scroll down there, all right? I know you guys don't like to click on the bio. Just get there, click on it, all right? On that page, we took the liberty to show every possible load scenario dealing with the monoblock amplifier in up to four dual voice coil or single voice coil subwoofers. You're f***ing welcome. You can now wire your subs and calculate your impedance. But what are the signs of bad subwoofer wiring in case you got a bad install or did it before watching our amazingly knowledgeable video? You can physically check the impedance on your woofers after you've installed them. Get a voltmeter, set it to impedance, then test the two leads disconnected from the amp. This will give you the resistance of your setup. A few signs of bad subwoofer wiring in layman's terms are basically less bass output, distortion, clipping, a burning smell which indicates burnt voice coils, and potentially a blown woofer. Occasionally overloading an amplifier could lead to overheating and even a potential fire. Some amplifiers can detect incorrect subwoofer wiring and go into protect mode until the problem is fixed. Okay, that's it everybody. Again, check out our subwoofer wiring and impedance page for more info on matching your subs and amps, link in the bio. If anyone has any specific questions or comments or needs a suggestion of gear, whatever, just leave it below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't liked this video and don't forget to turn on those notifications. Thanks for watching.